TikTok officially on notice after Congress passed that potential ban for the app within the United States. The president signed the legislation today. Parent company ByteDance now has nine months to divest or the app could be banned across the country. Our friend Stephen Kent from the Consumer Choice Center up play with me tonight to talk about that and more on the Final Five. Welcome back, Stephen. Good to see you again. Very good to see you, Jim. It's been a while. You are uh, my, my go-to when it comes to a lot of these uh, tech-slash-libertarian issues here uh, because ByteDance says this is, this is a violation of free speech out there. But, but what's your read on this? Well, I certainly don't buy the free speech First Amendment argument when it comes to speech on uh, TikTok uh, and the parent company ByteDance. When it comes to Americans' right to free speech, the 170 million Americans who use TikTok, their speech, their ideas can be offered up a, a wide variety of places that are not intelligence gathering and data mining operations for the Chinese Communist Party. There is no crackdown on speech. And this is where I, I I really feel that challenges from TikTok and court are going to fall short. And you see this in the substance of the way that Congress has passed this divestiture bill on ByteDance. One of the arguments uh, that we've heard from many people who oppose this is the idea that, well, sure, uh, uh, there may be some intelligence gathered or, or data collection here, but, but don't, don't all apps out there in some way, shape or form when you, when you gloss through the terms of service do the same. Absolutely. There is a great deal of uh, problematic things that go on with data collection, often way too much data than is actually necessary that goes on with American tech companies. But there's a really big difference here, which is that these are our American domestic tech companies that are in many ways accountable to U.S. consumers and more receptive to pushback from the United States government when they do things that are out of step with the law uh, and the ethics of at least our culture. Uh, TikTok and ByteDance are not receptive in that way at all, and their data mining operations and their collection of sensitive information of Americans, we don't know what they're doing with it and what they're using it for. But we should be pretty suspicious, given that when Congress was briefed by intelligence officials in March of this year, the tide turned very quickly in a bipartisan manner towards something had to be done. That's a, that's an interesting point, because it is a bipartisan move here. We heard this from, from different angles. And, and we've talked about these tech issues in the past on the show, where the question is, are the people in charge, do they have familiarity? Do they know what they're doing? Do they know what they're legislating? And, and I, I feel like we're finally at a point where where people do have that institutional knowledge, or there are people in the room who know what they're voting on. We've seen a bit of a shift, though, because it sounded like uh, a couple of years ago, the likes of Donald Trump said they were in favor of a ban. Joe Biden said he was in favor of a ban. He signed a ban. And now you have the other side, uh, many people sort of backing off on that. Yeah, and I mean, Joe Biden signed the legislation here earlier today and has committed to being on TikTok for the duration of the year, which that should rub people very wrong, that both <laughs> Joe Biden wants to be on TikTok to try to message to young progressives in the base while also cracking down on the app and saying that it is a national security threat. So people are going to ask, well, what is it? And why are you present on the app and playing politics? But politics is exactly what's going on here with the 270-day timeline that TikTok has to find a more appropriate uh, buyer in a liberal democratic country that is not hostile to the United States. Uh, people will be using it for this election season, and then we might not see much of TikTok in the years ahead, if that is the intention and the desire of the CCP. So as we go through the next couple of months here and, and back to the previous calls to divest, there was, I believe, Microsoft a couple of years ago said that they were they were yes. they would be interested in, in doing this. But there will be court challenges. We know that, that that 270 days may become much longer than that. Do you think, knowing what you know about the way that our government moves, uh, that we ever get to that point that there would be uh, either a divestiture or a ban? Or will this be tied up in courts for a long while to come? I think that this will eventually end in TikTok not operating in the United States. And I, I want to be very clear here that this is a divestiture bill in which a good faith company driven by profit motives, like most companies in the social media space, they would sell and try to make some money and comply with U.S. regulators. But we're not dealing with a good faith profit driven company when it comes to ByteDance and TikTok. And for that reason, it's very likely that the Chinese 
government is not going to go along with a sale of their favorite plaything uh, abroad for mass communications. Yeah. I find that unlikely, but I would like to see a sale happen because TikTok is popular. People like it and consumers should have access to it. But that's going to be up to the CCP to decide. Stephen Kent, good to see you, buddy. Thanks, Jim. Final five is back right for this. Your love and you.